April 2018. Chinese intelligence officer Xu Yunzhong arrives in Belgium. He's there for a secret meeting with a General Electric engineer he thought would be selling him aircraft technology stolen from GE Aviation. But to Zhu's surprise, instead of meeting with an American trader, he was instead met by a team of Belgian police officers and US FBI agents, where he was quickly placed in handcuffs and whisked away to a Belgian prison. But it would be his arrest and following investigation that would uncover one of the most brazen industrial espionage schemes ever undertaken by China. That's next on Maximus. Greetings everybody Maximus here. Well back in 2019, CrowdStrike, an American cybersecurity technology company based in Austin, Texas, published a report that exposed one of China's most ambitious hacking operations ever undertaken, one that involved Ministry of State security officers, kind of China's underground hacking division, as well as legitimate security researchers and insiders at companies all over the world. The aim of this multinational hacking operation was to amass intellectual property, to close China's technological gap in the commercial aviation industry, but specifically to help COMAC, the Chinese state-owned aircraft manufacturer who desperately wanted to compete with the industry titans of Airbus and Boeing to build its own airliner, the C919, for China, in China. The CrowdStrike report revealed how this methodical multi-year hacking operation systematically targeted foreign companies that had already been contracted to supply components for the C919 airplane. The Chinese hacking team targeted various multinational aviation companies between 2010 and 2015 and successfully breached COMAC suppliers like Amatec, Honeywell, Saffron, Capstone Turbine, GE and others. But unlike in other Chinese hacks where China used cyber operatives from its military units, for these hacks the Ministry of State Security took another approach by recruiting local hackers and security researchers. According to CrowdStrike and the Department of Justice indictment, the hackers that carried out the actual infiltrations were hackers that the China Ministry of State Security Jingzhou Bureau recruited from China's local underground hacking community. CrowdStrike says that some of the team members had a shady history going back as far as 2004. These hackers were instructed to find a way inside targeted networks, where they'd usually deploy Trojan horse malware such as Sacula, PlugX, and a virus called Winiti, which they used to search for proprietary information and smuggle it to remote servers. In the vast majority of cases, the hackers used a custom piece of malware that was specifically developed for these infiltrations named Sacula. This malware was developed by a legitimate security researcher named Yu Pingan. On the rare occasions when the hacking team couldn't find a way inside a target, a second Chinese Ministry of State Security or Jiangsu Province Ministry of State Security officer would intervene and recruit a Chinese national working for the specifically targeted company and use him or her to plant the Sacula Trojan horse virus on the victim's network, usually via USB thumb drives. The group, which CrowdStrike said it tracked under the pseudonym Turbine Panda, was extremely successful. The U.S. cybersecurity firm points out that in 2016, after almost six years of non-stop hacking of foreign aviation companies, the Aero Engine Corporation of China launched the CJ-1000AX engine, which was set to be used in the upcoming COMAX C919 airplane. Industry reporting points out that the CJ-1000AX is almost an exact ripoff of the Leap 1C and Leap X engines manufactured by CFM International, a joint venture between US-based GE Aviation and French aerospace firm Saffron, who also happened to be the foreign contractor that supplied turbine engines for the C919 already. But while China's hacking efforts might have gone unnoticed, the hackers screwed up when they got greedy and sloppy and went after targets a little too big to fly under the radar, such as healthcare provider Anthem and the U.S. Office of Personnel Management. Those invasions yielded a lot of useful information for recruiting future insiders, 
but they also brought the full attention of the U.S. government bearing down on their operation. And it didn't take long after that for the U.S. to start piecing the puzzle pieces together. The first to be caught were the planted company insiders, since they were the easiest to track down, and had no protection from the Chinese government since they were operating on foreign soil. After that came you, the creator of this Acula malware, who was arrested while attending a security conference in Los Angeles, and subsequently charged for his involvement in the Anthem and U.S. Office of Personal Management hacks. But Zhu's arrest triggered a massive ripple effect in China's information security scene. The Chinese government responded by prohibiting Chinese researchers from participating at foreign security conferences, fearing that U.S. authorities might get their hands on their assets. But the biggest hit to Operation Turbine Panda came in late 2018, when Western officials arrested Zhu Yanjun, the Chinese government spy officer, in charge of recruiting insiders at foreign companies. The arrest of a high-ranking Chinese intelligence officer was the first of its kind in the world in recent memory at the time, and the biggest intelligent asset transfer since the Cold War, other than Snowden's flight to Russia. U.S. officials hoped that Zhu would cooperate for a reduced sentence, but he never did. But CrowdStrike points out that the reality is that many of the other cyber operations that made up the Turbine Panda operations will likely never see a jail cell. Still, Zhu never flipped, and Zhu now in 2022 was sentenced to 20 years in prison for his role in the espionage. But China has yet to extradite any of its citizens charged with cyber-related crimes. But hackers have continued to target the aviation industry in the meantime. Turbine Panda appears to have ceased most of its operations, most likely crippled due to the U.S. arrests. But many other Chinese cyber espionage groups have taken over, such as Emissary Panda, Nightshade Panda, Sneaky Panda, Gothic Panda, Anchor Panda, and many more. Man, Chinese really love naming spy operations after pandas. But the Beijing government itself has played an even bigger role. Historically, they've dangled carrots in the face of foreign companies promising access to China's booming internal market. Even Airbus, the world's largest aircraft manufacturer, has been building planes in China for nearly 20 years now. However, foreign companies have seen themselves forced into joint ventures, only to be forced out later by their former Chinese partners, after local companies grew with the help of state subsidies and the know-how acquired by stealing trade secrets during the partnership with Western companies. In this process, Chinese hackers often help with forced technology transfer, breaching businesses' partners and stealing their intellectual property allowing the Chinese state-owned companies to put out high-end competing products in record time and at very low prices. I believe the term Chinese knockoff comes to mind. And yet after all that hacking and spying had taken place, and all the companies involved were well aware of their breaches, in the end, here in 2022, China did indeed produce the Comac C919 with the help of the very same companies they hacked to build their airplane in the first place. And all those companies that were hacked are still partnering with Comac to build the state-owned C919. The dimensions of the C919 are quite similar to those of the Airbus A320. Michelin supplies the tires. The U.S.'s Rockwell Collins provides cabin systems and avionics. Honeywell, also from the U.S., supplies the flight controls, APU, wheels, and brakes, and CFM provides the Leap 1C engines, the very engine technology that China stole to make their CJ-1000AX engine. And yet in February of 2020, Reuters reported that the U.S. government considered blocking GE from selling the Leap 1C engine to Comac citing concerns of reverse engineering competition for Boeing and military use of the technology, which would have been the right and intelligent move for America to protect its trade secrets. But all it took was a tweet for the United States of America to cave to China, because then President Donald Trump tweeted opposition to withholding the engine sales to China, saying that national security should not be grounds for trade restrictions and the U.S. eventually granted GE a license to sell the engines. Yeah, let that sink in. 
So then what was the end result of China's continued hacking on the West, trying to steal technology to build the COMAC C-919? Well, the usual outcome. China won again. The Western companies caved to China, and China built her COMAC C-919 with stolen technology from the very companies who still supply the COMAC today. So if you think about it logically, China didn't even need to steal it because the West just handed it to them. And you can be damn sure they will, if they haven't already, reverse engineered every component the West supplied for the COMAC. It's kind of mind-boggling that even after knowing China was hacking their secrets, all those Western companies remain suppliers to China's COMAC program. But what's even more mind-boggling to me is that these companies know by doing business with China, they are continuing to give away their secrets to everything from jet engines to iPhones, and yet they continue to manufacture these products in China. Well, that's going to wrap it up for now. I gave you a lot to think about and a lot of red meat to comment on. So please be sure to let me know down below. And as usual, if you think I've earned it, please be sure to subscribe, like, share, and ring the bell. And remember, leave the rubber on the runway and your troubles on the ground. And I will see you next time in the air. Yeah, this is Maximus.